Hey everyone, it's Kelsey again, and um, today I'm going to be reviewing a Spongebob episode that I've been meaning to review for a couple of weeks now. The episode, Bubble Troubles. Now, this is an episode that's not really talked about much compared to episodes like Atlanta Square Panas, One Course Meal, A Pal for Gary, Pet Sitter Pat, Spongebob You're Fired. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Bubble Troubles was a season 8 episode, and it's one that I didn't really care for. And I'm not saying that it's the worst episode I've seen, because it's actually not, but it's still a very painful episode to sit through from start to finish. Well, almost. Until things start getting really, really bad with Sandy. Basically, Sandy has to, like, go an episode... The, pretty much the entire episode with a lack of oxygen, meaning that she could die at any point in the episode. And yes, Spongebob is trying to save Sandy. Well, he did cause some of the problems, but he wants to fix it. What's slowing down everything is the fact that Patrick's stupidity is slowing down Sandy getting her oxygen. It's just really painful to watch. I mean, and the ending, I really didn't care for the ending either. I think I said the ending was, you know, stupid. And yes, it is. I mean, the ending hadn't, didn't make any sense. You thought Sandy's problems were fixed, but no. Sandy's treatum got, you know, you know, you know, engulfed by a bubble at the end. And yes, that's the ending. Spoiler alerts if you haven't seen that episode. Um, okay, so first and foremost... It's just a typical, I think they're throwing, Spongebob and Patrick, you know, start blowing regular bubbles. But then, wait a minute, I think they start doing with the, I forget, but they probably start doing with, with hot sauce at some point. And they, I mean, it's annoying and grating. Basically, they just blow hot sauce into each other's eyes. And they... I mean, it goes on for way too long. And, I mean, if you have, like, you know, if you cringe whenever you see something done to eyes, then this would not be a good way to start off the episode. And, of course, Squidward cuts a bonsai of himself. And, of course, SpongeBob and Patrick's stupid antics mess up his bonsai cutting gimmick or whatever. So they cause trouble to Squidward's Usual, and it's not a Squidward torture episode. No, this is a Sandy torture episode. Squidward doesn't go through any misery in this episode, except for having his bonsai destroyed. <sighs> or bonsai tree. Um, so basically, SpongeBob blows bubbles at Sandy's tree dome, and it, f and sometimes the it cuts off the air supply and in the tree dome, and it floods it. And apparently, there's like, I think some, an, like, you know, you know, an, like a submarine that had oxygen, of course, they had to screw it up again. And, of course, not fair. Sandy goes, starts going insane because of the lack of oxygen. She starts feeling dizzy. I mean, I think it's a really real thing where you get dizzy, disillusional. So basically, spin, Sandy, you know... Spends time at the Krusty Krab while Spongebob and Patrick try to hunt for air. After the whole submarine gimmick. So basically, Pearl is the- Pearl and Mr. Krabs are like the source of, um, you know, her oxygen. You know. And it's just really annoying to see, you know, Patrick tormenting Sandy. Not tormenting, but kind of- being stupid and torturing her that way. I know he doesn't... I mean, does he do it intentionally? Or is he just being stupid? Well, he he's just being stupid, I think. You know, Patrick? Patrick was just really unlikable in this episode. Kind of like he is in The Splinter. And if you think... And he was very unlikable there, but... I think he's more unlikable because he's doing... In this episode, to me... You know, it's just hard. It's just everything about this episode, 
not everything, but a lot of things about this episode are just wrong. It's just, when you see someone going through torment, an innocent person, that's the last thing you want to see. And that happening with Sandy. Of course, Spongebob doesn't have continuity, so you know Santa would be okay at the end, which he is. But it's just the thought. It's just very horrific seeing Sandy go through all this. Which is why I, you know, he listed as an animated atrocity. Yes, there are other episodes that are good from season 8, but most of them just don't seem like... They're just... Surprisingly, season 8 is worse than season 7. Basically, Spongebob's three major seasonal rot... Se seasonal rot eras were season 6, 7, and 8. You know... Season 9 is automatically a step up, but there are a few dubs here and there, but... Season 8, in my opinion, I feel like it was the worst season. So I think I'm done reviewing Bubble Trolls. Yeah, I should have said I'm done reviewing it, but... Yeah, I am. My my final score for Bubble Troubles... Um, 3 out of 10. No, not even that. 2 out of 10. Well, because... Why? Because it was just very, very mean-spirited. Not mean-spirited, but very hard to watch. The pacing was not that good. The plot was all over the place, and... Um, Seeing Sandy go through, this is even more, I feel like this is even worse than someone's in the kitchen Sandy. At least she's not suffering like she is, but she does get, yeah, someone's in the kitchen with Sandy. You know, wasn't as bad as this one, but it was still bad. So yeah. I'm gonna, I might review Keep Bikini Bottom Beautiful next because, um, that's another atrocity card I made with Mr. Enter's animated atrocities card, so... Anyway, I hope you enjoyed hearing my review, or not, about bubble troubles. And if you really like this video, you can subscribe, or... You know, if Or not, if you want to hear more of my Spongebob reviews, or more of my other reviews in general. So, have a good day, everyone. Kelsey, out.